Right, in this particular video we're going to cover uh, how to create a simple extract and load tool that can actually be used to transform as well as you'll see uh, later down uh, in the lesson. Uh, we won't focus on that in this lesson but uh, I think it'll become apparent. Um, let's get started. So um, I'm in my terminal. Uh, the, the first thing that I want to make sure that I have installed are three uh, particular libraries uh, it's called Petal, Psychop G2, and SQL Alchemy. So I'm going to type pip install Petal. Uh, I'll, I already have this requirement. You might not. Uh, just make sure it installs properly. Uh, the other one will be Psychop G2 and SQL Alchemy. So if you don't already have those installed, uh, please make sure that you do. Uh, run through that real quick and then um, pause the video and then we'll get started. Okay, so for this. Uh, the remaining of this tutorial won't work in Nano. We'll turn to uh, Atom, uh, a, a free text editor for uh, Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac. And let's go ahead and um, and take a look. Here I've typed in some uh, the base commands. Uh, first of all, import pedal as etl, psychop g2 spg sys, and then from SQL Alch Alchemy import all. Uh, I want to go ahead and reload uh, the system and set my default encoding to uh, UTF-8. Alright, so I had to fix a quick typo. Um, and let's go ahead and save that. Run it real quick. So go Python simple L, which is the name of uh, my file here. No errors, so that's good. Uh, now I want to go ahead and set my DB connections. So I want to take a look at our server really quick. Uh, here in Postgres, we have uh, a couple of databases, operations, as you can see, and a Python database. Uh, so my objective is going to be to take uh, some of these tables here in the schema and transport them over to this Python database, and so the tables can go into this public schema. So I'll probably choose orders and maybe salesperson. So let's go ahead back. Uh, let's so let's establish our connections. If you didn't already uh, set up your PG pass, you can refer to one of my videos where we talk about setting up the uh, the passwords there, so we don't expose them in our script. Uh, let's continue with um, establishing a dictionary with our connection properties. So I'm gonna call this dbcnxns for connections. Uh, you can call it whatever you like, but uh, Maybe we should stick to consistent naming conventions just for the purposes of this tutorial. So uh, the dictionary key was going to be operations and then this operations value will hold uh, my Postgres connection properties minus the password of course. So I'm going to say db name equals operations user equals etl host equals it's going to be my local host. Now here, if you're dealing with databases across different servers, uh, you would, of course, enter your, your host uh, URL or IP address. Uh, my next key is going to be Python, uh, which is for the database that it's going to be my target. DB name equal Python user equals etl and host again one two seven All right. that should do it um, I have other databases uh, in Postgres um, like I have the Postgres database um, and I also have a reporting database in a sandbox but today we're just going to focus on transferring from operations to the Python database Let's go back. Uh, now, next, we want to go uh, and instantiate some connections. So, I'm going to call this source connection, right, or source con it is going to be equal to my alias of psychop d2 pg dot connect. And I'm going to uh, use the properties, the connection properties uh, from this index of operations. So I will say db cnxns um, and the value of one. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. 
uh, the value of my key, which is operations. So now in the dictionary I'm referencing operations, so it'll give me this uh, this value here. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with my target connection. I want my target to go to Python, to the Python database, excuse me. So I'll call this target con equals pg connect. Do the same thing. Python. And there we go. So let's uh, let's make sure that these connections are set up. We can actually put this in a try catch block, uh, but in fact, if we run it uh, and we don't get an error, then that means we're okay. So let's just uh, skip the, the try catch, but we'll simply want to do that in, a, in the future for you know for good programming purposes. Okay. So so far, no error. It seems like the connections are just fine. So uh, let's just go ahead and continue. Uh, what we want to do next is we want to go ahead and establish some cursors as well uh, so that we can execute some uh, queries on the source and target uh, databases. So I'm going to call this my source cursor and um, we'll go ahead and instantiate by saying source con dot cursor and we'll do the same thing with um, the target. Get con dot cursor. Uh, by now, you're probably really liking Adam as it's uh, filling in some of the syntax for you and minimizing the typos that you may come across. Okay, so now that I've instantiated my connections, set my connections and cursors. Now we need to be able to do something with this information, right? So uh, what we want to go ahead and uh, do is want to go ahead and identify the tables that we want to port over. One thing we can do is we can actually uh, create like a list variable, maybe call it tables equals, and you know, table one, table two, and so forth. Um, but if we want to do it more programmatically, uh, we can actually uh, query those table names uh, from Postgres itself. And we would do that by uh, querying the information schema. So we'll switch really quickly to the source, which is operations. Okay. So let me say, oops. Operations database here. Select table name from information schema dot columns, and I don't have that many tables. I think I only have three. So uh, let's go ahead and run this. Obviously, it's bringing back uh, many tables. So it's actually my uh, public schema. So I'm going to say where table schema equals public. And I'm just going to say group by one so it doesn't bring back uh, all these results. Because the reason it's repeating these results is because it's actually um, bringing back column names, or it would be bring back column names. So here we go, in my uh, public schema I have salesperson returns and orders. Uh, so I just want to go ahead and you know try to execute this information here. Uh, or excuse me, grab the table names uh, from a query instead of actually listing them out. And that makes my program a little bit more programmatic. So I'm just going to copy this. And what I'm going to say is uh, my source cursor is going to execute I'm going to put triple quotes so I don't have to deal with break lines and all that other stuff. Uh, it's going to execute the retrieval of bringing in these uh, table names here, right? For the ETLing, excuse me, uh, for the ETLing of, um, of the production tables into my Python uh, database. 
but maybe I don't want all the tables. I think I just want returns and salesperson. So I'm going to say and table name in returns and salesperson. That should be good. So I want to capture the um, the table or the list, excuse me, uh, in an actual list variable. So I'm going to say I'm going to declare a list variable, call it source tables, and it's going to be equal to um, my source cursor results, uh, and I'm going to get those results with a fetch all statement or built-in function, excuse me. Okay, now I want to go ahead and iterate through that built-in function. So I'm going to say for t, like just a uh, simple variable name for t in source tables. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to call my target cursor, and I'm going to say if it exists in my target uh, place, let's go ahead and delete that table. So I'm going to say execute drop if exist and I'm gonna put a little um, percent s for a string and uh, and name the string variable outside of here it's just a kind of a Python parameter passing convention um, and it's gonna be t0 that's gonna hold the value of the table okay uh, so I'm good so what it's basically doing is uh, it's saying, hey, uh, if the table exists in my destination or my target Python, go ahead and drop it before you bring it over here. And the reason we're doing that is because, um, you know, if it exists, um, you know, maybe one will refresh the data, um, you know, from the from the source and like replace it. You know, it's part of our operations. Uh, you can get a little more sophisticated, like incremental changes. But right now, we basically want to say. If it already exists, drop it because we're going to bring it from this new source and kind of and like basically refresh it. So, um, so that's why we have this uh, drop exist statement. Okay. Now, actually, I think we're safe to run this. So let's see if this is working or if we get any errors. Okay. Ah, so I have a little syntax error: drop if exists. So that should say drop table if exists. Try it now. Okay, great. Everything's good. And again, you may want to um, use try uh, accept blocks to handle errors. Excuse me. Um, so now I want to go ahead and um, call my uh, one of my pedal functions. Excuse me. And what I'm going to say is. Uh, declare a variable source data uh, as source data set and it's going to equal let's see a from db using our source connection uh, and I'm going to execute an SQL statement I'm going to say select all from percent sign s which is a string which again, it's going to be that table name that I'm iterating through up here, and it's basically saying uh, assign the results of this particular SQL statement from my source connection here, right? Which is the operations database, and basically I'm just saying a select all from, right? And uh, if I want to get creative, um, you know, I can actually write a more sophisticated SQL statement here that's transforming the data or whatever. But for simplicity's sake, we're just saying kind of you know select all from this table, give us all the results, uh, and then assign it to this source data set, right, or source ds variable. Um, and then now once we capture the results, uh, the results, excuse me, we want to invoke pedal again. I want to say etl to db, right? So we have a from get the results, then we have a to. And we're going to say source ds, which holds our data set, uh, target connection, 
to establish like where this is supposed to go to and uh, the table name that it should that it should be uh, in our target connection and again we're going to capture that uh, that table name that we're iterating through right here uh, this next option yeah, well this next value is optional uh, and it's optional and it's the reason we import SQL alchemy is we're going to say create the table because we're gonna we want to we want to have it so like if the table doesn't exist uh, our program creates it for us right and that's why we're dropping it ahead of time uh, for that same reason because here we're going to create it now uh, again this is optional so if you had the, the table already predefined you wouldn't have to do this right uh, and we're also going to pass another parameter excuse me called sample and that sample basically saying um, scan through n many rows to try to determine the data types so uh, this particular pedal isn't like that great off the bat uh, you may have to do other configurations within SQL Alchemy potentially or bring in some other um, modules from the library but uh, but basically we're going to say sample a thousand rows so you can get a sense of what the data types are uh, for when you create the table in our target database uh, you can you know try to create it with your best guess in terms of what should go there so uh, now I want to switch back to Postgres really quick and uh, I'm going to close this out and again take a look at where what we're trying to do restate it so we go to our schema we have tables I'm going to bring uh, returns and salesperson right and I'm going to pipe that over to the Python database and, um, and the table should appear here and as you can see I don't have anything so returns and salesperson okay let's go ahead and save that go to our terminal run our script okay no errors let's go take a look at this maybe re refresh the tables and boom there we go we have returns and we have salesperson so that was pretty quick and easy painless uh, 572 rows and returns and salespeople well eight rows so not a lot of data so we can I mean definitely that that executed fast um, so but you know it's a very simple very efficient way to create a, a very simple ETL script and check that out in about 30 lines or less uh, not bad so hope, hope you're enjoying Python. Thank you.